Chapter 12 I woke up at 4 in Dutch morning ready for the day. All attempts to go back to sleep failed. So I lay there with the biped pumping the air, air in and urging it out, enjoying the dragon sounds but wishing I could choose my breath. Choose my breath. I reread an imperial affliction until mom woke up and rolled over toward me around 6. She, nod she nodded her head against my shoulder, which felt uncomfortable and vaguely Augustinian. The hotel brought a breakfast to our room that, much to my delight, featured deli, featured deli meat among many other deniers of American breakfast constructions. The dress I'd planned to wear to meet Peter Van Houten had been moved up in the rotation for the, for the orange dinner. So after I showered and got my hair to lie halfway flat, I spent like 30 minutes debating with mom the various benefits and drawbacks of the available outfits before deciding to dress as much like Anna in AIA as possible. Chuck Taylors and dark jeans like she always wore, and a light blue t-shirt. The shirt was a screen print of a famous surrealist artwork by a Nune Maverick, in which he drew a pipe and then beneath it wrote in cursive, Cessna Pausman Pipe. This is not a pipe. I just don't get the shirt. Mom said, Peter Van Houten will get it. Trust me. There are like 7,000 Maverick references in an, in an imperial affliction. But it is a pipe. No, it's not. I said, it's a drawing of a pipe. Get it? All re pre representations of a thing, of a thing are inherently abstract. It's very clever. How did you get so grown up that you understand things that confuse you, confuse your ancient mother? Mom asked. It seems like just yesterday that I was telling seven-year-old Hazel why the sky was blue. You thought I was a genius back then. Why is the sky blue? I asked. Cause. She answered, I left. As it got closer to 10, I grew more and more nervous. Nervous to see Augustus, nervous to meet Peter Van Houten. Nervous that my outfit was not a good outfit. Nervous that we wouldn't find a right house since all the houses in Amsterdam looked pretty similar. Nervous that we would get lost and never make it back to the philosoph. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Mom kept trying to talk to, talk to me, but I couldn't really listen. I was about to ask her to go upstairs and make sure Augustus was up when he locked. I opened the door. He looked down at the shirt and smiled. Funny, he said. Don't call my boobs funny, I answered. Right here, mom said behind us. But I'd make Augustus blush and put him enough off his game that I could finally bear to look, at, look up at him. You sure you don't want to come? I asked mom. I'm going to, I'm going to the Ricks Museum in the Vondel Park today, she said. Plus, I just don't get his book, no offense. Thank him and lead a bite for us, okay? Okay, I said. I hugged mom, and she kissed my head just above my ear. Peter Van Houten's white row house was just around the corner from the hotel, on the Wanderstrat, facing the park, number 158. Augustus took me by one arm and grabbed my arm, grabbed the, grabbed the, grabbed the oxygen cart with the other, and we walked up the three steps to the lacquered blue-black front door. My heart pounded. One closed door away from the answers, I dreamed, I dreamed of ever since I first read the last unfinished page. Inside, I could hear a bass beat thumping, thumping loud enough to rattle the window sills. I wondered whether Peter Van Houten had a kid who liked them, who liked rap music. I grabbed the I grabbed the lion's head door knocker and knocked tentatively. Tentat tentat the beat continued. Maybe he can hear over the music? Augustus asked. He grabbed the lion's head and knocked much louder. The music disappeared, replaced by shuffled footsteps. A dead bolt slid. Another. The door creaked open. A pot-bellied man with, with thin hair, sagging jaws, 
and the wick all the beard squinted into the sunlight. He wore baby blue man pajama like guys in old movies. His face and belly were so round, and his arms so skinny, that he looked like a dough ball, dough ball before sticks stuck in the wick. Mr. Van Houten, Augustus asked, his voice squeaking a bit. The door slammed shut. Behind it, I heard a stammering, reedy voice shut. Lee the Y. Until then, I pronounced his assistant's name like Lee the Y. We could hear everything through the door. Are they here, Peter? A woman, a woman asked. They are a little Y. There are two adolescent apparitions, apparitions outside the door. Apparitions. She asked with a with a pleasant Dutch lip. Dutch lip. Van Houten answered in a rush. Fant phantasms, 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 specters, ghouls, visitants, post post terrestrials, terrestrials, appar apparitions. Lidavai, how can someone pursuing a postgraduate degree in American liter literature display such abominable English language skills? Peter, those are not post terrestrials. They are Augustus and Hazel, the young fans with the young fans with whom you have been corresponding. They are what? They I thought they were in America. <clears throat> yes, but you invited them here. You will remember. Do you know why I left America, Ridabai? So that I would never again have to encounter Americans. But you're an American. Incurably, so it seems. But as to these Americans, you must tell them to leave at once. That there has been a terrible mistake. That the blessed Van Houten was making a rhetorical, rhetorical offer to me, not an actual one. That such offers must be lived symbolically. I thought I might throw up. I looked over at Augustus, who was staring intently at the door, and saw his shoulders slacken. I will not do this, Peter, answered Lillibye. You must meet them. You must. You need to see them. You need to see how your work matters. Lillibye, did you knowingly de deceive me to arrange this?